Uh, hello, good morning, and welcome uh, to this day's uh, The Wire's Facebook Live discussion. I'm joined by N.K. Venua, founding editor. My name is Anuj Srivas, and uh, we're here this morning to talk to you and sort of discuss the various issues that emanate from this year's uh, finance bill, 2017's finance bill, and more specifically, the amendments that have been uh, you know, proposed over the last one week uh, in the Lok Sabha. As many of you might already know, yesterday, uh, because the finance bill is a money bill, it was passed in the Lok Sabha yesterday, with a number of amendments, and these amendments affect up to 40 different laws uh, and acts. So for this, just a quick explainer for those of you who might not know what the finance bill is. Uh, every year, the finance bill is presented immediately after the budget, during the budget uh, session. Uh, it's basically whatever the government usually proposes in the budget, you know, changes to the country's tax structure, new tax proposals, the tweaks in direct and indirect taxes, all of this makes its way to the finance bill, and eventually it gets passed into a law. And this is usually a formality. Over the last two years, however, the finance bill amendments have been proposed that have nothing to do you know, with uh, the finance or budget or so on and so forth, but it tend to affect uh, many other uh, laws. And so there are a number of troubling amendments that have been proposed and passed uh, by Parliament yesterday, and we're here uh, to talk about it. So, Venu, I mean, uh, the, the, I mean, the title of our discussion today is: Is the finance bill, you know, impinging on various rights, whether it's of, you know, corporates, whether it's of people? You know, you have everything from Aadhaar to increased search and seizure powers yeah. uh, for them. So, what, what I mean, what are your initial thoughts before we dive into uh, this? You know, my initial thoughts are: It's very disturbing that this government. Uh, is uh, you know is proposing amendments uh, rather unthinkingly uh, and actually impinging on some of the basic rights of the people. I'll, I'll explain to you. It's a basic right if 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 the income tax department thinks that you you have evaded taxes. There are a set of procedures in place uh, uh, for income tax department to come and investigate, inquire, uh, launch a preliminary inquiry and then seize your assets. Now seizing of assets comes at a later stage and for which uh, current procedures uh, uh, before this amendment, yeah. procedures would have required uh, you to get a uh, get an order from a from a court, uh, you know, and there are safeguards. Yeah. Now yeah. all these safeguards have been done away with. This, this in my view is a civil liberties issue. Now the BJP, uh, the government might argue that that this this is being done uh, in order to uh, to unearth black money and to yeah. to it's all for the good, but that is not the question. The intentions are maybe good, but you you can also achieve those intentions by following procedures which are consistent with with basic uh, civil rights, right? Correct. Now correct. here, why are they doing this? They're doing this. Uh, this amendment will allow a middle level income tax officer to go uh, and seize assets of, of any person they suspect of having evaded income tax and and uh, without any uh, producing any evidence and then start inquiring Correct. so uh, a lot of businesses and even yesterday at parliament house uh, a lot of members of parliament were describing this as undeclared emergency now what will happen is they, they they are now going to uh, knock on the doors of various businesses or companies or individuals who have deposited money post demonetization into the banks. Uh, Mr. Jetley has said that there are nine hundred thousand plus accounts where notices have gone. Yeah. No, that is fine. You go and inquire and find out whether they have evaded taxes. But I don't think it'll, it's a good idea to just go and seize all their assets and, and then start inquiring. You know, That's so true. this goes yeah. against the, the grain of of basic uh, rights, basic civil rights, basic safeguards, procedures. Uh, and also, there's another aspect which I want to bring your attention to. This government has now brought a Binami Act. Uh, you know, they've strengthened the Binami uh, 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 the Properties Act. Uh, they've included cash also as part of the Binami. Now, they, they might as, uh, they, they well might use this, uh, the, this, this income tax amended law to go after the opposition. You know they definitely do it. They'll uh, they'll uh, you know they'll uh, they'll hang it uh, like a sword over the you know uh, over the opposition politician, and uh, uh, we'll have to sort of see how this pans out. You know. That's true. I mean, so just just a little bit of background uh, for our viewers. So the amendments that we're talking to refer uh, you know relate to the income tax act. So section one thirty two of the income tax act says that when you know when they embark on search and seizure raids, 
the company or the individual in question they have redressal so they can go to an appellate tribunal they can go to an authority and say that oh did they have reasonable cause did they have a reason so on so forth so so many people that, that need not be done yeah, yeah. see uh, earlier the appellate tribunal would actually direct the middle level officer yeah. or or guide the middle level officer now they've done it uh, done away with that now uh, you know somebody in the government can directly call a middle level officer and tell that person to go and uh, read uh, a b or c you know That's and, uh, and 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 what's what's ironic when all the, the, <laughs> you know my fundamental problem anuj is all these laws all these amendments are strengthening the coercive state you know the state as uh, as a as an unreasonable coercive uh, you know authority is being strengthened coercive authority w- would also then transfer into authoritarian you know there's, there's not much of a uh, there's a very thin d- dividing line between excessive excessively coercive state and an authoritarian state and you know I- ironically so so a-, a lot of commentators have pointed out that this is this could pave the way for the return of you know tax terrorism you know which was uh, um an allegation that the bjp government when they were the opposition during the upa time levied yeah. often at the congress that this is slowing down investment and so on and so forth uh but moving on to the next amendment another huge issue with uh, the finance bill that has been passed is that it re- the the amendments that relate to political funding so during the budget speech when jetley got up he announced that yes after the demonetization drive and after the center's approach to cracking down on black money they wanted to address political funding so they came out they, in the budget speech he said there would be electoral bonds you know um, the amount of donation that a company could make was reduced from 20000 to 2000 rupees that the uh, donations should ideally be made in check or digital transaction so on and so forth but when you know the amendments that we're currently seeing there are two important amendments here one earlier restriction said that companies could donate up to 75 uh, 7.5% of the net profits over the average, last 3 years average 3 years net profits the Correct. previous 3 years yeah. that limit now has been done away with yeah. there's there, there's no cap on how much a company can donate the second amendment is that uh, they don't have to disclose earlier you know when they donate when a company donated money to an indian political party they had to disclose in their profit and loss account to which party they donated yeah and now with electoral bonds and this restriction completely being removed we won't know what companies uh you know uh donate to what parties so i mean is this is this what jetly promised in, in the budget you know cleaning up political funding absolutely you know my problem with this uh, anuj is that they they're doing all this in the name of transparency and and by keeping the donations anonymous it is anonymity is, is the opposite of transparency how can you claim that that something that is anonymous is transparent and why shouldn't businessmen reveal their preference i mean If, if if you think the reason they're being given is that indian politics is not matured enough if if the businessman reveals which party is giving it to the the other party may penalize uh, that uh, but then if you have a if you claim that you have a, a a system which which operates fairly with all safeguards judicial safeguards why should a businessman uh, fear uh, this in any case businessmen are very powerful i don't think anybody even when they commit uh, huge uh, violations uh, uh, in regard to taxes or even black money violations uh, governments are never able to reach these big businesses why are they fearing you know they should have the courage to 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 tell us and put it in the balance sheet which party they are funding and the parties must have the courage to say so and so is g- given me money you know correct so wh- i don't know why they're shying away from this and the other point a more fundamental point they have reduced uh, uh, the cash contribution which can stay anonymous 2000 rupees now earlier it was 20000 uh, earlier somebody got 100 crores he would split that uh, that party or the party president would split 100 crores into denomination smaller denominations of 20000 and now they would do, uh, do split into smaller denomination of 2000 rupees so it doesn't make any difference it's it's little more paperwork right correct that's true so i don't know what what exactly is the government achieving by this no. i think it's a completely totally half baked measure if they were really serious they should say every paisa deposited should have the name of the depositor correct that would have been admirable you know that would have been commendable which they have not done so I still maintain that this government's commitment to uh, to, to 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 attacking uh, black money uh, or or removing black money from the system uh, is still half-hearted. The, the prime minister, even on political funding, uh, generally, the prime minister only talks about 
building a consensus with other opposition parties. He doesn't take the initiative himself like he does. If you could, if we could demonetize, uh, uh, you know, pull 86 percent of the currency from the system, he he could as well uh, announce some of the other bigger things. Uh, uh, you know, take a big initiative and say yes, BJP will be. Uh, declaring every paisa that it gets from every entity, whether it's five rupees, uh, hundred rupees, two thousand rupees, twenty thousand rupees, and he, we should do that. That's sure. And and, and this time the UP elections uh, showed the election commission said that three times more cash uh, was seized in the UP elections as compared to 2012. You know. Yeah. 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 That's true. So. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we're, 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 get, we're getting some questions in from our readers and we'll soon address them, but please do send more uh, as and when it comes. But you know, also I just wanted to remind our readers that this finance bill is not the only finance bill that you know dealt with political funding and sort of introduced measures. So last year, as we reported in the 2016 finance bill, uh, it retrospectively left political parties off the FCRA hook. You know, they had accepted money yeah. uh, from foreign companies and well, and this and uh, that you know just so, so now, now now the the same parties uh, which through a retrospective amendment, bailed themselves out of a violation, a clear violation uh, pronounced by the High Court, yeah. can now go, go to these foreign companies uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, have higher contributions, even more than 7.5% of the net profits. You know, they, can, they can take 15% of the net profits, 20% of the net profits, um, while not revealing uh, which foreign company uh, is, uh, is funding. So look at the... Look at the risk. You know, as it is, uh, it has been said that when foreign companies contribute uh, or subsidies of foreign companies, it has national interest implication. On top of that, you're saying that you did not reveal which company has contributed. Correct. So yeah, look, look at the look at the scary implications. Uh -huh. you know? mm -hmm. So you know, we have one comment from our reader Sarita Rani who talks about what 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 are the implications of removing the the cap on corporate funding. So earlier it used to be that seven point five percent average over the last three years, but that that has now been removed. You know what 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 are the implications? So the uh, so Sarita, the implications are uh, earlier suppose a co company had thousand crore profits. Uh, so it could give uh, seven point five percent of of thousand crores. Uh, so uh, so that a company could not go beyond that as a formal contribution to uh, to a political party. But it was it was revealed that the, it was mentioned in the political party's books that the so and so company. Now what they have done is they have removed the cap of seven point five. So you can you can give ten percent or even twenty percent. Twenty percent would be two two hundred crores. And not reveal uh, uh, as to uh, who's given it. Uh, it will stay anonymous in the books of the company and in the books of the party, political party. At least earlier, when it when the limit was 7.5 percent, it it was more transparent. You you knew who's contributing. So this is the problem I have. That's true. That's true. So moving on, we know another another very controversial amendment that especially affects you know not companies but the individual taxpayer, you know the middle class salaried person is the mandatory linking of our Aadhaar numbers to our PAN card. And, uh, you know, it says by July 1st, uh, you know, you, you ha have to make this linkage. And yesterday in the Lok Sabha, uh, Arun Jetli, finance minister, came out and said that this would, you know, help curb tax evasion, you know. Uh, though we're, we're, we're still at a loss. I mean, me and Venu have sort of been discussing from morning about how exactly this is. Because, for, I mean, people who are unaware, the PAN card already acts as your unique identification ID, yeah. uh, you know, for what you do. And so the tax department knows that. Uh, you know what you're filing and can go into your bank account and look. So I mean, you know, I mean, uh, what uh, this is this is what I call unthinking. You know, the Supreme Court has repeatedly said that Aadhaar demand for Aadhaar card uh, should be uh, or, or disclosing Aadhaar card, Aadhaar number should be voluntary, except when the government, of course, is uh, you know is is uh, taking its own initiative to uh, to. To deliver some welfare program, which otherwise it is not committed to. Uh, in, in those cases, they they may. Sure. But uh, but I am more specifically not talking about linking Aadhaar card to income tax uh, filing. But we PAN card itself is a it's it's an identification, right? And now they've not only done that; they've also put a deadline of July first. Now there'll be a huge rush for income tax, uh, you know, uh, 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 filers to uh, filers to. To go and get the Aadhaar card uh, now. Why put such a deadline? <laughs> and number one, fundamentally, why why not wait till the Supreme Court has, uh, you know, really sort of pronounced, uh, one way you know, or one, yeah. one way or the other. And that's what the opposition members of Parliament have also said. But uh, but the finance minister, Mr. Jitli, is insistent, and he thinks that 
by amending the law, he can even get around what the Supreme Court uh, uh, is uh, is saying or wants to say or the pr- Supreme Court proceedings. That's know? true. And, and, and Benu, one of one of the more you know really uh, unbelievable conditions to this Aadhaar amendment is that if you already have an Aadhaar card and a PAN card mm-hmm. right now, and if you don't link it by J- uh, July first, your PAN card becomes invalidated. It'll yeah. it'll, it'll have been no uh, uh, use, and we're already seeing. So you know, on, on Twitter and other people are, are, are posting. The problem is that your Aadhaar number. The demographic details and the PAN card—they're in two different formats depending yeah. on your name. So some yeah. people are having trouble linking their other card to the PAN card. Yeah. You know, so who who do they go to for help or the grievances? Yeah, they, I mean, this, this is a new bureaucracy they've created. I, I think they'll have to uh, they'll have to do away with this. They can't uh, they can't really sort of uh, carry out this threat, as it were. You know that that people's PAN cards would be invalidated. You know, and the other thing, I'll make a, a more fundamental point when it comes to businessmen revealing their uh, contributions they they claim that the polity is not mature so they should have anonymity but when it comes to people like you and me uh, aadhar card they're saying that no everything should be revealed you know we 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 don't deserve as individuals we don't deserve any measure of anonymity uh, you know and privacy uh, because aadhar card uh, uh, if the polity is not mature if the system is not mature our private uh, privacy details could well be hacked right yeah. so w- why is that not being uh, in an immature uh, or not so mature polity that's not a risk but a businessman uh, you know his name coming out is a big risk you know this is i don't understand this 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 great uh, you know genuflection to businessmen that uh, that government's practice you know. that's true <laughs> I mean, so now with regard to Aadhaar and, and IT returns we have a question from reader Madhi Das Gupta he's asking Venu if I refuse to get an Aadhaar card can I still file my IT returns this year what's going to happen to me I think they IT cannot refuse legally they cannot refuse to take your uh, income tax return and if they refuse uh, the Supreme Court is already on your side uh, you, you could go to the Supreme Court and challenge this Correct. Uh, I don't think the government can uh, uh, can can refuse to uh, you know take uh, uh, returns from people just because they don't have an Aadhaar number. Correct. And, and Medu, we have we have multiple questions here just talking about the Supreme Court's influence. For instance, Arjun Chay- Chari in Kovur has asked, you know, how is the government able to get away with this when the Supreme Court is still, uh, you know, um, uh, it still hasn't decided. I mean, I don't know what to what to, how to really say this. I what don't is, know. It's I, contempt. I, yeah, this <laughs> government seems to be sort of. Uh, uh, I don't know whether they've got very emboldened after the UP results that they can push other, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> institutions around. As it is, it even earlier it had a tendency to push other institutions around. But possible, it's possible that after this, this UP victory, they this, they they think that they've gained some psychological advantage. That's true. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm. It's no surprise the way suddenly this Ram Temple issues. Is, you know, cropped up in the judiciary, you know, just, just after the UP results. You know. That's true. <laughs> and, uh, you know, another, another uh, point that many people are pointing out and we're getting some questions on is the fact that because this is a money bill, it doesn't have to go through the Rajya Sabha, where the BJP does not have a majority, yeah. where, you know, there won't be much debate and so on and so forth. And then, so Arjun is asking, Arira Arjun, is the finance bill really a money bill? Many of its provisions make it look like a simple ordinary bill that deserves to go through the Rajya Sabha and, you know, uh, deserves to get full debate. And we've, we, we've seen this in the past also, you know, when it came to the Aadhaar Act, for instance, that was shoved through yeah. Parliament as a money bill. Um, I think the... I think this government has very cleverly over-interpreted uh, a number of amendments, uh, construing them as, uh, as as money bill, whereas they had nothing to do with uh, uh, what essentially constitutes a money bill. They, in the sense that they had nothing to do with, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, uh, they had nothing to do with money being allocated from the consolidated fund, right? Yeah. That's what constitutes a money bill when, when there is a financial implication. There, where is the financial implication for uh, for for creating a regulatory body? You know? Yeah, that's true. So I mean, c- c- coming to that, so one of the the last controversial amendments that we're going to talk about in this discussion um, is so the finance bill. One amendment to it does clean sweep, you know, of many appellate tribunals and, you know, regulatory organizations and so on and so forth. So basically what it does is that, uh, you know, tribunals such as the Competition Appellate Tribunal or uh, the Airport Economic Regulatory uh, Tribunal or the Cyber Appellate Tribunal, it merges them with other 
bigger uh, authorities and in some cases you know i can i can sort of understand what this is going on for instance yeah. this the cyber appellate tribunal is non functioning yeah. because no one has been appointed as chairperson for the last 5 years there still it gets 30 crores a year salary but on other ends for instance it says that airport pricing should now be handled by the telecom dispute yeah, uh, tribunal so <laughs> i i you're absolutely right anuj I, you know there could be two sectors which in some ways are contiguous right you could you could argue that telecom or it or even media yeah. there there's some talk of media uh, because media also uh, you know new new media is uh, at the intersection of internet and telecom right but uh, what is the commonality between airport regulation te- telecom i don't understand it will re- require uh, a whole new set of expertise now unless they they're going to introduce uh, different benches within tdi said in that case they have to change the name they have to call it telecom and airport regulatory authority so i i i couldn't sort of get uh, what exactly they're doing maybe more details will come in the days to come that's so. true and, and, and another point here i just want to mention is that there are a number of analysis that came out yesterday and the one that we published as well the this amendment also introduces gives more leeway for the government to appoint the members of these different tribunals so always the government has had the authority to appoint the chairperson yeah. but now it has the uh, authority to appoint rules qualifications and, and removal of even ordinary members of these tribunals mm-hmm. who sit and so on so it i mean it could lead to a conflict of interest if the government is litigant as it is in many cases mm-hmm. uh, in these tribunals so it's uh, you know indeed but this concerned. is a, anuj this is a uh, this is an ongoing problem if you look at sebi or if you even if you look at tri in all the regulation there's one last line uh, all encompassing line which says that that finally when it comes to any large policy issue or, or otherwise the government will is a final arbiter yeah. so government can always use uh, you know that single provision to 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 wind up they, earlier the uh, tri was wound up in the first uh, yeah. avatar of tri was simply wound up and they created a new one so so that that's a, that is a fact we live with that it's a fact of life my only thing is the state should not become more intrusive and coercive as, as they are doing in the case of aadhar yeah, yeah that's true that's true so i think we're we're going to wrap up our discussion here thanks it was uh, really illuminating but um, uh, once we get more information you know how these amendments will actually pass out especially when it comes to political funding you can expect more news and analysis for us thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you soon